Hey, what's up? I'm going to be reading you guys this article from you yesterday about how the Rona, the current pandemic that's going around in the world, might have actually spread a lot earlier. This is something that I have thought since I've been following it back in... I actually started hearing about the first cases in December, and then I wrote a blog post about it in January 31st. Leave a link to that below. And then there's this other concept which I've been thinking about for some time. Leave also a link to that video that says the world can actually be safer today yet the amount of suffering has increased. And this is just due to perception. This is due to how the figures are actually being caught. Take this for instance. If you look at a city, 100 years ago, there was 100 people living in this city, and maybe, let's say, 20 houses got robbed in that year. If you're living in that city, you may actually only hear about one house a month. So one house every other month, missing some months where you're like, okay, I don't even hear about it. So it's a 20% chance you're going to get robbed in that city, but you only hear in passing about the situations. You hardly actually know unless it's like your direct neighbor and you actually meet them or it's your house, of course. Now, in current year, there could be a thousand houses in that same neighborhood. The actual robbery, robbery rate could have dropped down to 10 houses, but every time a house is actually robbed, there's a reporter there. You get pictures of the house. You hear about the neighbor. You see the people crying. These people took this from me. There's a list of exactly what it is. It's covered in the news for maybe an entire month. Then when the next one happens, it's just passing in after that next entire month. You're keeping all the statistics. So they know every single house that has been robbed. You hear about it. Your perception of it is actually there. In that situation, you might think that more people have actually been hurt. More people have actually been damaged than they were in the past. Even though in the past, you just found out about less of them. You might have missed a few of the houses that were actually robbed. When you actually hear about it, it's passed down. You're not seeing the gory details of the situation. So technically, 10 houses out of 1,000 means it's a safer neighborhood, but your perception of it might be it's more dangerous. But in the past, when you did hear about the stuff, you were hearing about it from like secondhand, thirdhand. You're hearing just snippets here and there. You're not putting the visuals together you might think, oh, you're a lot safer than you actually might have been at that time. And that's kind of the thinking that I had with this post. And this is what I wrote. The first identified case was in November of the Wuhan virus. Uh, not the first person to get to have it. The first identified case. It's even half as, if it's even half as contagious as it's being found out to be, then who really thinks that this thing hasn't spread around the world since December? Only way you find the actual proper patient one is if it's a direct operation to spread it or something like an accident happened in a known virus lab. That's how you could know, like, we had this in containment and then it went from containment to this person. And that's how you could normally tell that actual initial person. If it's this bat thing, then it's not like the first person who gets it from the bat, assuming that that first person who gets it from the bat isn't just immune and just becomes a carrier and spreads it then gets pneumonia-like symptoms and is in Wuhan and actually goes to get tested at whatever medical facilities they have there. And then the, the people at the medical facility say, yeah, let's run the full gamut of tests to see if he has some strain of this one thing that we know of. Because coronavirus is actually a strain of different viruses and things like that. So to, for them to think that, okay, we're going to check and see if this is a new strain of this known thing instead of testing for the basics of what it is. Let's say the person is just mildly sick and he actually did die from it and he wasn't like horribly bad. They might have just gone in, seen like a general protection, pr practitioner, sorry, and he could have just gotten some over-the-table things to just deal with some of the symptoms that he had. And then that could have happened from there. So that's my kind of general thought on it. That's my intro to it. And now let's get into the reading of the article. Then I'll come back with some thoughts at the end of it. So we're going to get to the reading of this article now. This is fact check. Could your December cough actually have been coronavirus? Experts say more research is needed. And this is by Ian Richardson at USA Today. This was published on March 26, 2020 and updated on April 3rd of 2020. It's on the screen here. There's going to be a link below if you want to read the article for yourself. But I'm just going to read through the article, then give some thoughts. So they have here COVID-19 pandemic myths debunked. Uh, I think it's good to get as much information as possible on this thing. Try to find as close to the original sources and double check if there's any links in the article. Check out the links. Some of these situations, you might find a situation where somebody is quoting numbers or figures over and over again. It might be multiple articles. You find they're talking about one thing. That's one source. That one person might have 
information that's different from a lot of other people. So I think it's preferable to find original sources, finding actual different ways of getting information and things like that. And I'm just trying to help with that. With this one, as I said in the preamble, this is something that I've been kind of thinking, and let's just read this. The claim, people who suffered from a round of illness in November and December likely had the coronavirus. A handful of widely circulated Facebook posts have asserted that people in the United States likely contracted the coronavirus as early as last fall. Who got sick in November or December and it lasted 10 to 14 days? With the worst cough that wouldn't go away, the posts say. If you can answer yes, then you, can, then you probably had the coronavirus. There were no tests and the flu test would come back negative anyway. They came in, they called it a severe upper respiratory, sorry, respiratory, respiratory infection. Many of the posts currently circulating include the profile photo of a Facebook user named Donna Lee Collier. Collier did not respond to a USA Today request for a comment on the original post, on the origin of the post. Now this one, I, could this just be an op? Could this be a fake person? Is Donna Collier an actual human being? Double check, Donna Collier, if you're out there. Check in, Donna Lee. Okay. Bonnie Powell of Waynesboro, Georgia, copied the status and received more than 230 shares. She said the positive the post reflects her opinion, not necessarily scientific proof. But she said that she heard from friends about sickness at the end of last year, which makes her suspicious. Our area has a very virulent flu season. With many of my friends testing negative for the flu, she said on a Facebook message. You get a picture here, a sick woman covered in a blanket, lying in a bed with a high fever and a flu, blowing her nose. Pills and glass and water, turn table, get the images. I think with this thing, it kind of goes in and maybe somebody asked for this, or it's just a description of the picture they got directly when they got it from the stock photos and they just put that in instead of, I don't know why they put that explanation there. Okay. Coronavirus virus likely originated in November, was first in the U.S. in January. Researchers have tied the origin of the virus to a live animal market in Wuhan, China. The World Health Organization first received a report of the outbreak on December 31st, but the virus originated in China more than a month earlier than that. A study published in early March by the researchers of ETH Zurich puts the origin of the virus in the first half of November. Rumors surrounding the origins of the novel coronavirus have swirled and as it spread around the globe. Theories that the virus originated in a Chinese laboratory or that it originated outside China and was brought over by the U.S. Army are not supported by evidence. According to the medical experts, the virus is believed to have animal origins, likely in bats. On January 21st, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention announced the first case of novel coronavirus in the United States from a person who had recently returned to Washington from Wuhan. The United States has since surpassed China and Italy to become the most infected country in the world, according to a tracker from Johns Hopkins University. Symptoms of the novel coronavirus include a fever, cough, shortness of breath, reported illness, and the illnesses range from a mild symptoms to severe symptoms and death. And now you have here... Something going with the symptoms of coronavirus, which are which are wide and ranging. Could the coronavirus have been in the U.S. before January? Experts say it's plausible that coronavirus came over to the U.S. from China before that January case, but more testing is needed to be sure. Anecdotally, or anecdotally, we've heard about some influenza-like illnesses in December and January that were a bit atypical, says Louis Ostros- Ostrowski a professor of infectious diseases at McGovern Medical Schools at UT Health in Houston, at the University of Texas Health in Houston. But the thing we need to solve, that puzzle, is when we actually started doing testing of antibodies, not just detecting the virus. So Ostrotsky said that it would include taking a look at blood samples from December and January to see if the virus is already in circulation. Dr. Georges um, Benjamin, executive director of the American Public Health Association, said he believes when the researchers do more testing, they will probably find the disease was in the U.S. earlier than first believed. I believe at this end, when we do look back, and we will, we will probably find that this disease has was here earlier than we thought, he said. We also know that when we closed our borders, it was still, it was very, very leaky. 
However, Benjamin said that it's plausible but not likely that the coronavirus was in the United States in November and December. If it was in the U.S. before the end of the year, the case would also have been likely connected to travel from China, he said, and likely not widespread. Dr. George Petri, assistant research professor at the University of Michigan School of Public Health, said it's important to remember that multiple existing viruses can cause severe upper respiratory symptoms and circulated late last year. Among them was influenza B, which grew in intensity around November and December, as well as RSV and influenza A. He said it was possible, it's possible that there were sporadic travel-related uh, cases earlier than the discovery of the first case, but agreed it was likely not widespread as far back as November or December. There's a lot of surveillance that goes on for influenza every year. And so, if we, if we were seeing a lot of coronavirus activity at that time, even if you couldn't test for it, you would see the signals in that influenza surveillance. Uh, in connected news, I just saw, I was listening to the greatest podcast in the world, the No Agenda podcast, and they had a, they, one of the hosts was talking about how there's actually been a drop in influenza, um, in influenza cases over the last in flu season, and some of that could just be some of the things that would have been attributed to influenza before are now being attributed to coronavirus because there are some similar and crossover effects. Back to the reading. Would already, would already having the coronavirus make someone immune to further infection by it? That's also still under investigation, Ostrowski said. Ostrowski said that in general terms, other coronaviruses do not result in built-up immunity. That sucks. A New York Times article published Wednesday about research efforts underway to study antibiotics characterized the answer to the immunity question as a qualified yes with some significant unknowns. Dr. Vinit Menacheri, Menacheri, a virologist at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston, told the Times that the people who are, in, who are infected may have one or two years of immunity with any longer time span hard to predict. Our ruling, more information is needed. At this point, experts contacted by USA Today say it's unlikely that just because somebody had a cough or other symptoms of upper respiratory infection, that they probably had the coronavirus, especially as far back as November. But it also, it's also plausible that some cases did arrive in the U.S. earlier than that, earlier than the first reported case in January. Experts say additional testing and research is needed to get an exact picture. So that's it for the article. Now, some thoughts. Okay, so what did you guys think about the article? I personally know a few people who have given anecdotal evidence that they had some actual situation in the past. I talked about the No Agenda podcast, and he's actually talked about how he knows other people. Just think about it in your life. If you know people in the United States of America, if you know people in other places in the world, just think, have some people had some illnesses? I personally know directly three people who have mentioned that they personally had some odd actual illness. This around December around February, around that time, and then now they get to the point where they're like, okay, this might have been this. And just in this situation, do you really think with the Chinese New Year, with all these people traveling all around the world and things like that, that if it's close, it's even close to as close, even just tiny bit as close to as contagious as people are seeming to say it is, then who's to say that this thing hasn't been spread? How was it just limited to one location? That just doesn't make the sense to me. And this is not saying that it's not something to be worried about, it's not something to be dangerous, it's not something to actually take precautions about, but the fact is it has been going on, just like that thing in the past. You might have heard of those 20% crimes in the past. You might have not heard of them, but they were going on. Yet now, you get into a time when the current year you're hearing about all the actual robberies, but at the same time, security measures have been put in. They're also talking about they've actually caught the people who were actually stealing in these houses and things like that. The people who actually were harmed by this have better insurances, have better ways to actually come back up and get help from actually being with that, being damaged by that situation. And I think this is a similar thing with this coronavirus thing. First of all, when they start talking about numbers in the United States surpassing China and Italy, you have to start thinking about what's the demographics of this place. The percent, America has 320 million people, Italy has 60. Sure, China has billions of people, but you look at the location they said it was in, and then do you really trust the figures coming out of China? I personally am a bit skeptical about this. And I also kind of was talking about this today, 
and are sick. You know, with the whole China situation, people might try to hold someone responsible. And it, I think if the Chinese Communist Party people were actually more aware of how the world kind of treats things, it would actually be in their better interest to have a higher number. Because if you get to a situation where you're like, oh, we have a billion people, but we only had, what, they said 4,000 people actually died from this. But then you have a country like Italy with 60 million people, and then they have a death toll of 12,000 or multiple times more then the world's going to be looking like, hey, this started there, and then these other countries got a lot more damage than you did. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, just being honest about this thing, actually setting information out to change, say, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, I don't like saying that, but I just said it anyway. So in, in the actual general, in my observation of this, I think actual sharing information is more positive. But you look at this, United States of America has a lot more people. A lot more people are being tested. It gets into a situation where even though we're finding the testing, we're seeing the actual damage of this virus now. If it has been going around, it has damaged some people, but now these people being found now, the numbers might be kicking up, kicking up, kicking up. But at the same time, the knowledge of how to deal with it and how to fight back against it, how to help people who are infected by it is also increasing, increasing, increasing. So the perception of the disease might be increasing, the perception of the danger of the virus might be increasing, but the actual damage from it could be reducing. We could be getting better. It could be safer to have it. I think it's safer to have a known disease, a known virus, a known bacteria, than it is to have an unknown one, if that makes any sense. So I was just thinking that's pretty much one thing I wanted to mention. Those numbers might be a little off there, um, the symptoms. Just think about it. This is anecdotally, as I said, Think about in your life. Think about you personally. If you've had something, ask around and see if somebody has had something in the past. And if so, I think that's some... It's a, it's some good news. It's better to think of it that way. I think the world is going to rethink some things with just the travel and the way things are done. Were we doing things in the right way? Could we have done things better? Could we have been more prepared for this? I'm here in Nairobi, Kenya. They just finally initiated a sort of quarantine um, limitation of travel inside and outside of Nairobi that's going to start in a few days. They've had like some 7 to 7 a.m. to 4 to 5 p.m. kind of shutdown of, of uh, work and jobs and, uh, and offices and stores and things like that for, I think that's been going on for about a week and a half now, and now things are ramping up, testing's ramping up around the world. So this is the thing. Do you think it's just a simple thing? Like, for example, with the whole thing, another thing to think about on this whole perception of it, if you're in North Korea, do you really believe there's no cases in North Korea because they haven't reported it? Do you think there's actually no cases in Kenya until they started testing 15 or about two, about three weeks ago or two weeks ago? I don't think so. I think that thing was going around already. So this is something to think of. Information can be a double-sided sword. <laughs> it could make you more worried, but I think in general, when you actually think about it, the more actual information you have about something solid, valid information about something, I think the better you are able to actually deal with that situation. So just think about the info out there, think about what's going on, stay clean, stay safe, wear your mask, wear your gloves, do your hand washing and things like this. And I think we'll all get through this for the better. And uh, a lot of things have changed already. And I think a lot of a lot of positive changes are going to come. I'll be back with more videos later. Till next one, like, share and subscribe. Links below to the merchandise store. If you want to help me out making these, it's also links to PayPal for one-time donations and things like that. Till next time, goodbye.